This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. So we have our emoji maker. Let me hit run and we have some basic functionality, obviously. Uh, let's see what we're going to be working on though, this portion. Now that we have our initial lists and variables declared, which we do right here, initialize, uh, initialize in our emoji updates images. Uh, let's add some user interactivity. Perfect. Find the on event that corresponds to each of the following three buttons. So the first one's going to be on event that corresponds, uh, add one to index variables that is associated with each button. Okay. So our three buttons here are these, right? And so as long as I'm not in run mode, if I hover, it says I button display teeth, maybe, uh, let's see. I have no idea display. Oh, text area. So that's not going to be the actual ID. This one has I button something mouth button and extra button. Okay. So let me reset this. This should actually be okay, cool. So now we need to find those. So on the event that the I button is touched, call the update emoji function to update the image drawn on the screen. So add one to the index variable that is associated. Cool. Okay. So first I'm going to throw down on mouth I extra. We need and then what indexes I'll be using for these. We have a mouth index, an eye index, and an extra index. So that should be easy enough. So we just want to add one. And this is the I button. So I index is going to be equal to, got the math block, whatever I index used to be equal to plus one. Now it's going to be the same for the mouth and the extra button. So I'm going to go ahead and add that and talk about it in a sec. Cool. And so I index is equal to whatever I index used to be equal to plus one mouth index, same thing. And when do these blocks run? They run on the event that the I button is clicked. So if I click run here, so far no bugs on the event that I click this, what is going to occur? Well, this code gets executed and it's not going to change anything yet, but it actually did add one to the I index. I index is reassigned. It says the computer hits this and says, ah, I index has a new value, but what is it? Oh, it's equal to the old value plus one and same if I click the mouth button or extras. Okay. Now we need to run this update emoji function, which should update our screen. And I'm going to run this each time. So that's looking good. And I'm just running it in all three. Now let's go check. Was it down here? Where's this code? Oh, update emoji. What's it do? It sets the I images to the I and whatever the I index is. Keep in mind, guys, what is the index? The index is the spot of the list that we are currently at. So we have an I list that's, if we go into our data, the I list is just URLs or images, right? Links to images. And so if I add one to the index, what happens is, well, the I list will go from zero because we index at zero to the first, to the second item, which is index one or the third. And on the screen, what we displayed is the new eyes in that list because update emoji gets executed. So I click the button. What happens? I index equals the old index plus one. We then run update emoji. The computer goes, where's that smack? It then sets the image URL for eyes to the I list plus uh, the I list, whatever index we are now at. So the eyes will change. Let's test this all out. Boom, boom. Yeah. All right, cool. Bug alert. Uh, oh yeah, we will see an error. Boom. And the reason we're seeing that is now the index is beyond the size of the list. So our list only has what five things in it. So if we go to index seven, uh, actually index five, it's going to air out on us because it indexes at zero. And so that is something that we might have to take care of. A way we could do that is an if statement. And if an I index is greater than the size of the list, we either don't allow an update or we circle it around. Let's see what their suggestion is. Yeah, they suggest circling it back around. The bug is caused by the index variable increment with on event for the is greater. First, we could make a simple condition check. Yep. Or we could go back to update and make use of our modulo operator as seen below. This would also work. 
Um, guys, I'm going to go ahead and implement the change to this. I would suggest Modulo deals with remainder and things like that. If you're comfortable with it, go. That's a great solution. I think this is more straightforward, especially when learning to program, because it's already complicated. Let's be honest. So what I'll do is right here, I'm going to put an if statement. And it's just going to say, so after I've updated the I index, I want to know if I index is greater than the I list dot length minus one. We're minus one because remember, um, conditionals, right? Conditionals, I mean, uh, lists are indexed at zero. So if there's five items, the only valid indexes are zero to four. Zero is the first, four is the last. And so if it is at the end of our list, we're going to say, okay, we want the variable i index now to be equal to zero. So we want to reset it. Let me set this up for the others. And, and now what should happen is this error shouldn't be able to occur. Oh, I hate when it does these odd little spaces, but they don't have an impact. Let me hit run. And now notice we are never going to get an error. Because when it needs, once the list is, once the item or the number in the list, the number at the index is greater than the size of the list, we ask the computer to wait. If the current index is greater than the length of the list minus one, meaning greater than the biggest index allowed or the end of the list, then what does the computer have to do? So if our index has gone beyond the end, this is true. And if this is true, the computer has to run the code inside this mouth thing where I reset the index to zero. Now, if this is false, it doesn't run any of this. It skips over it, it says, up, oh, that's false, and it will just run update emoji. If it's true, it resets it to zero and runs update emoji. Cool. I think we got it covered. Onward.